Hi, this is Gilles, the radio prepper, with a new printer today. And you know how much I use my uh, printer, my 3D printer. It's an artillery genius, and I'm very happy with it. I've been using it. You've seen it on the channel. And I just got the uh, bigger version, the Excel version, basically, of that printer, the Artillery SWX2. So I'm going to unbox it really quick and uh, put it together and uh, we'll print something. And I have to tell you, I, there isn't a week that I don't use my uh, printer. I use it for uh, amateur radio stuff. Of course, I print boxes, uh, coil forms, uh, insulators, uh, uh, j uh, you know, uh, little adapters for the BNC. I mean, I print stuff all the time. And even before I bought a printer, I, I didn't know I was going to use it so much. I didn't know I had such a need for a 3D printer. 3D printers and amateur radio just go hand in hand. And of course, I build drones as well. So for uh, building drones, you know, I print a lot of TPU filament. That's the type of uh, flexible filament. And uh, that's extremely useful for drones, but also all kinds of other stuff. You know, I, I printed a wheel for a the vacuum cleaner for my parents. <laughs> I have to print stuff for my ex-girlfriend. Uh, it, it's just, it never ends. And this printer is actually larger. The print bed is bigger, so uh, that's going to be extremely useful. All right, enough talking. Let's put it together. Let's open that box. It's a large box. <laughs> Let's see what's in it. Okay, so we have parts here. Oh, that's for the uh, the spools. We have the manual accessories. It's mostly uh, put together already, so there isn't much to uh, to do really to uh, to put it together. It's, it's pretty much you have to bolt the disassembly here to uh, the bed to the the base. Pretty much looks like my, my artillery genius, just bigger. And that's a much larger bed, much larger. Here's the bottom of the base and the screws are already in place. They are trapped, so you're not gonna lose them. Pretty much the only thing you have to do is to bolt uh, the top here to the base. And that's about it, really. Connect the wires and, uh, and you're done. The Allen wrench is actually included, so it's something I don't have to look for. Even though I have some, but I don't have to look in my tools. So four screws and uh, that's it. You can see it here next to the Genius and uh, it's a much bigger, much taller, larger machine. The Genius has a bed that's 23 centimeters wide, uh, so 22 usable, and this one has 31, so 30 usable. Those are for big prints. All right, don't pay attention to the mess on my desk. <laughs> So I replaced the Genius and I don't know what I'm going to do with it because uh, it's a great printer. Unfortunately, I don't know where I'm going to put it because uh, I just don't have the space. I have like 250 square meters here and <laughs> it's <laughs> have radios and antennas everywhere. So uh, I don't know. Here are the supports for the spool. Probably just like that. about right. There is a contact here in case you run out of filament. This pool goes like this through the connector. Just like the Genius, the head is a direct drive so it's really uh, what you want if you want to print uh, flexible filaments like TPU. So just put the filament in, that's it. I have to cut those uh, tie wraps here. Make sure you remove all the masking tape that's a little bit everywhere to protect the cables. Now you might wonder, you know, I didn't plug in any cable really except for the, uh, the connector for the, the filament and one here, but actually there is a large connector here that's attached to the base and to the, uh, the arch here. And when you 
screw that in, it just makes contact. So it's awesome, no cables to worry about. Actually, I lied, there was one right there behind here, but that's about it. One small cable here, one small cable on the other side, and that's it. All right, smoke test. I haven't turned it on yet, so first time. It's booting up. Yes, <laughs> it is booting up. Good sign. And it's exactly the same interface that I have on the Genius, so it's very, very simple. By the way, you do get extra stuff with the printer. You get a spare ribbon cable, which is great. Uh, you get rollers for probably bigger spools. You get a, uh, a printing head here. You get also a USB key, tie wraps. You get a wrench, you get a cable, a USB if you want to plug it uh, directly into your printer. Uh, your computer. <laughs> you get a spare button that, that is a little spring in there. I don't know what that's for, but I'm sure it might come handy. Some rollers again. Um, it's probably for the different kind of spool and uh, the uh, Allen wrenches. All right. So now we're going to level the uh, the bed, and people are a little bit scared of that, but it's it's really simple. First, you have to uh, go to Tools, and you're going to click on Heat. And you're going to heat up the uh, the extruder to 240 degrees Celsius. Or well, I didn't find any way to change the bed temperature without printing. So I click on Tools Level. I'm going to choose the uh, first corner. There is a, an auto leveling feature, so that's going to be much more precise than uh, my Genius, uh, which required to do it by hand. All right, so I turn the wheel on the bottom until it catches and I want just a little bit of resistance, not much. Now I switch corner and I do the same. A little bit of resistance, yep. Next corner. It's a little bit too, too hard there. So that's about right. Last corner. Too tight as well. About right. And I want to repeat that one more time. Oh, I have to do the center. Although not much you can do about the center really, but that's about right. First corner. Just right. Second. little tight. All right, I've done this five or six times now, so I'm going to go back and there should be an auto leveling uh, option somewhere. I have to click on more and auto level. It's going to measure precisely uh, the height of the bed. It's taking a lot of um, measurement points, that's good. My, my old printer, once again, didn't have that option. It worked though, I mean, I never had a problem with it. I had to redo the, um, the leveling once in a while, but not very often. Last one, and that's it. Now I have to save the settings, so there is a button here that says EEPROM save, and I guess that's it. So we are in Cura, uh, which is the slicer program that uh, 3D printers use. There are other ones, but this is the main one, the most uh, common. So I'm going to go to uh, actually add a printer, a non-network printer. I'm going to go down to Artillery and uh, I'm going to choose the Artillery X1, Sidewinder X1, but I'm going to change the name to X2. So I'm just going to call it SWX2, Add Printer. And the manual asks us to change a few things here. So we're going to change the uh, X width 
wide depth at 300 so that's good z height as 400 that's already correct heated bed is checked and compatible material to 1.75 which should also be okay where is that so that should be nozzle settings maybe an extruder one here nozzle okay 1.75 that's good so that's it it's already uh, pretty much set up and now i have my new printer here all right let's print something simple for ham radio something that won't take hours okay here's the bnc adapter it's a simple cube uh, to put a bnc very simple let's open that go to the settings i'm going to use uh, let's see height zero one that's fine all the rest of the stuff I'm going to leave on default. Infield density, 20%. That's not a lot. I'm going to put 40% to make it a bit stronger. That's a little bit too much here for the strength. Not necessary. 210 for the filament temperature for the, the extruder. 50 for the bed. 60 millimeter per second for the speed that's a bit high but uh, i want to see if the printer can do it and that should be no problem really i do want uh, retraction print cooling yes 50 percent i don't need support and i'm going to use a skirt is fine all right let's slice it Two hours and two minutes very good save to disk and actually I want to save that to of course to my uh, thumb drive that came with the printer and that's it we'll see so I put the thumb drive in the printer oh here's my file BNC and confirm Apparently he's taking some measurements again. Okay, that's a good start. We should see the filament come out here. Oh, nice. Nice white filament. It's going to be easy to see. Very nice, very smooth, perfect print. So no surprise, it works really, really well. It's a great printer and uh, it will replace my uh, Artillery Genius. Of course, once again, it's the same brand, it's Artillery and uh, that's the X2. The Genius I, I paid for with my own money, of course. Full disclosure, I did not pay for this printer. It was sent to me for review, uh, but I was not paid for the review. I was not told to be to be nice for the review so uh, anyway my reviews are objective and I always uh, give my honest opinion and I think this is an excellent printer. I'll put the link uh, down in the description if you want to get one and that's it for this video. Have a good one! All right, because this website does cost me much more than what it brings me, I did sign up for an affiliate program with EMP Shield. We are all concerned about EMP's, you know, electromagnetic pulse, especially for radio equipment. And EMP Shield does provide protection for your whole home, for your vehicle and for your radios. Yes, for your antennas. I was a bit skeptical, I have to admit, but after looking at all the documentation they have and the uh, military testing they did, 
and those devices they uh, they offer are extremely fast to protect you uh, against EMPs but also of course lightning so it does look pretty legit to me I got you a coupon for $50 off at EMP Shield, so don't forget to use it. It's Radio Prepper in one word or lower case. By the way, do use the link down below uh, rather than going to the site directly. That gives me more brownie points and you do save 50 bucks and I get a kickback. So don't hesitate to have a look at their website. I am learning more about it myself and all the products that uh, they offer and I'll tell you the way the world is going right now I think it's a good precaution the solar cycle is uh, coming back and there will be a lot of solar activity so we could get a natural EMP that's always a threat and you want to protect your electronics your toaster your washing machine your oven everything that has an electronic chip in it is at risk and you need a device that's fast enough to ground everything in nanoseconds so that when the power comes back, <laughs> you still have your electric and electronic devices. Once again, the coupon is Radio Prepper, one word, lowercase, and that will give you $50 off.